Hello, my name is Douglas Block. Welcome to the Depression Recovery Channel, where each week we talk about practical tools and coping strategies for healing from depression and anxiety. Today is Flashback Friday, a feature in which I republish one of my earlier videos you might not have seen that contains really important coping strategies that will help you attain a better mood. Now, here's today's video. The title of today's talk is Your Pets Can Keep You Here. Before we start, we have to tell our regular joke. And uh, one of my videographers said, well, tell one about pets. So here it goes. Why do dogs make bad dancers? They have two left feet. <laughs> All right, so as I uh, mentioned, the title of today's video is Your Pets Can Keep You Here. And over the years that I've been a depression educator, run groups, I've noticed that many, many people tell me that one of the reasons they keep on living is because of their attachment to their pets. It's a well-known uh, finding in the mental health community that actually having a pet can uh, improve your sense of well-being. I remember that someone said, petting a cat lowers your blood pressure, and I better start petting Bruce a lot more because my blood pressure has been high. At any rate, uh, I've seen people bond to their dogs, their cats, their horses, parrots, turtles, and even snakes. For many people, having a pet is like having a child, and it creates the same feelings of deep emotional bonding. When this bonding occurs, a hormone called oxytocin, the love hormone, is released into the bloodstream, bringing feelings of pleasure. If you are depressed or suicidal, these feelings of well-being can likely provide an antidote to the despair you are likely feeling. A pet may become your primary source of love and support, especially if you have no family. I know people tell me that their pets, their dogs, cats, give them, quote, unconditional love, more so than other people. Uh, this is especially uh, important if you're single. I know a lot of single people who've got their dogs, their cats, you know, that's, that's their connection. And I remember one woman, a friend of mine, I got a job in Chicago and drove her dog through a snowstorm in Wyoming all the way from here to Chicago. That's how bonded she was to her dog. I'd like to share a story now, uh, I never get tired of telling the story, about how a man's love for his dog saved his life. Way, way back when, in 2002, when I was starting to run depression support groups, uh, a guy came up one evening. He was driving a really nice Porsche. He walked in, he had a three-piece suit. I don't know how much it cost, 10 grand maybe. And he had a Rolex watch. And he was also very good looking. He was an attorney. I said, what is this guy doing in this group? Well, he told the group that the night before, he had actually gone out to his garage, uh, put a you know tube from his tailpipe into the car, turned on the ignition, and he was intending to die by suicide through carbon monoxide poisoning. At that moment, he realized he has forgotten to feed his dog. Okay, he said, I meant her, well, feed, you know, Fido one more time. And he went into the kitchen, fed the dog, and said, wait, 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 what was I doing? And that kind of snapped him out of his trance. Now, why may you ask why such a person, uh, successful person, wanted to kill himself? Well, the old Beatles song, Money Can't Buy Me Love, uh, his fiance of two years had simply rejected him the night before, and in a moment of despair, he thought that life was no longer worth living. Now I'd like to share another powerful testimony from a man named Andrew, who's a YouTube commenter. Uh, Andrew had been uh, in, in the army, had PTSD, had been depressed and suicidal for many years, in and out of hospitals, and this is what he said about his relationship with his dog. I have a service dog and she literally keeps me alive. I recommend that if you are suicidal and alone, try to get a little buddy. Animals have no malice, no manipulation, have absolute loyalty, and will love you even if you don't love yourself. Don't stay alone, please. If you can't deal with people, a fuzzy pal can help you be here and stay here until you find the help you need. It doesn't have to be a service dog, just a pet who has endless love for you no matter how bad you feel. So, this statement uh, tells us that these animals can really, really make a difference in people's lives. And of course, I'm sure you've heard of service dogs uh, that are prescribed uh, by psychiatrists for people with mental illness. I remember one time I was uh, doing a, a lecture tour in St. Louis and I crashed to the house of a woman who had a service dog. Very wonderful animal. She was very proud of him, except what happened is uh, when I wasn't looking, he went into my suitcase and ate my script. Oh well, thank God I'd said it many times before. Finally, for those of us who are more bonded to felines and canines, uh, bonding to a cat can also keep us alive. It certainly was true for me in my third major depressive episode. I was so absorbed in my own pain, I didn't know what to do. One of my friends said, hey, you've always liked cats. Why don't we go down to the Humane Society and 
and uh, adopt a cat. So I saw this one cat, beautiful Maine Coon cat in the cage. He was pacing back and forth. He really wanted to get out. So I said, okay, that's it. His name was Quinn. I said, no, that's not going to be my cat's name. So I named him Gabriel, which means God is my strength. And sure enough, that cat became my strength because nurturing him over the next six or seven months gave me a reason to keep on being here until I finally got well. I love these stories about the uh, impact of uh, pets on people's lives. So I'd like uh, you to let me know about your stories. Uh, have you ever had an animal that really made a big difference in, in helping you through a difficult period? Or do you have one now? And is it helping you right now in your sense of mental health and mental well-being? If you'd like to share your story, please uh, leave it in the comments section, as so many of you do. Or you can email me, douglasblock at gmail.com. This has been Douglas Block. I hope you found the information on this Flashback Friday video helpful. If so, please give it a like as likes draw more and more people to this channel and hopefully some more subscribers. Uh, you can also leave your comments in the comments section or email me douglasblock at gmail.com. If you do want to subscribe to this channel, click on my photo in the closing credits. You'll be taken to my subscribe page. And if you click on the bell to the right, you'll be notified every time I do a new video or live chat. And if you want to contribute to this uh, channel and become a patron, simply click on the Patreon image. You'll be taken to my crowdfunding site. And until next video, I wish you the best in your mental health recovery. Thank you so much.